Well, howdy. Figured I'd uh, put this up to YouTube. Be easier than trying to send it to everybody individually. Um, I wanted to show you the latest antenna project I just finished yesterday. This is a four square phased vertical array. Uh, this one is for 40 meters. Um, it originally belonged to Tim Duffy, K3LR, and my uh, buddy Mike, KE3JP, got it from him. Mike opted to go a different direction at his location, so I ended up with this antenna from Mike. And uh, been uh, a, learning, a little bit of a learning curve, which of course what ham radio is all about, learning, as to how this thing works. And the best I can try to explain it, each vertical has a 75 ohm coax line that goes to the center box there, which I'll take you over to that in a minute. And then, of course, a 50 ohm line to the shack. And through the control box in the shack, I can change the direction that the antenna points based upon changing the, the phasing of how the four verticals interact with each other. That's a, a very, very amateurish way to explain that. Uh, <laughs> I'm no engineer. <laughs> but... Um, at any rate, I, uh, like I said, I just got this finished up yesterday. Had some good reports last night with it. <clears throat> um, I worked this fellow in Georgia. Hopefully he never sees this because I don't remember his call. Sorry. Um, but he was set up portable for Parks on the Air down in Georgia. And I told him what I had done. And he said to me, he says, well, uh, change it around and I'll, I'll tell you what your signal differences are. So I did through multiple transmissions and he said to me he said yeah there's a definite difference he said you went from 10 over 9 to about an s4 to uh, just about disappeared <laughs> so it's uh, it's working well the um, each vertical has to have ground radials of course in order for it to work and the uh, <clears throat> There's 32 radials around each vertical, and I don't know if we're going to be able to see those that well in the grass, but we're going to we're going to take a walk here and try. But the uh, the ones in the center can all uh, interconnect. I don't know if y'all can see them or not. Get down to here where some of the green ones are, maybe. I don't know if we can see these or not, but maybe you can see them around there. Hard to see on the phone screen in the sunlight, you know. But at any rate, there's 32 um, radials for each vertical. Now in the center, they can all tie together, so they're not quite as long. But the ones that go out to the sides here are, of course, full length. So, being it's for 40 meters, the verticals are 32 feet tall, and the radials are 32 feet long. So you do all that math, I figured it up that... Uh, I've got just under 4,000 feet of wire I've laid out here in the last couple of days. And uh, over the course of the winter, ground will soften up, these things will disappear. And uh, as the grass starts growing next spring, they'll really disappear. I laid out some uh, copper here and connected all the, all the radials that, can, that meet. You can cut them and, uh, and buy, uh, Oh, I can't think of it. Bond them together, that's the term. Just like James Bond, bond them together. Rather than having them overlay each other. So it saved, uh, being able to do that saved a few thousand feet of wire easily. But uh, there's the center box where everything comes to. And uh, I'll take you uh, over here. Nor the shadow. Yes, I'm still overweight, as we all are over here to one of the verticals so you can see where the ground radials all lines all connect and where the coax line comes in the the big blob there is some ferrite cores that you have to use on verticals um, to make everything isolated so you don't get any any uh, rf back in your coax lines so that's uh that's what we've been up to here and uh it's a beautiful November day here in uh, Poverty Flats. Uh, 
and uh, it's uh, nice enough that I'm wearing shorts today. For November, Pennsylvania, I'll take it. That's it from here, 73 and good DX from KM3P.